Hi, Ms. Chan. So for my presentation, I'm going to be talking about the stages of ego development according to Jane Lovinger. So Jane Lovinger was born on February 6, 1918 in St. Paul, Minnesota and passed away on January 4, 2008 in St. Louis, Missouri. So Jane Lovinger was an American psychologist who focused on the idea of ego development across a person's life. So actually a fun fact, Jane Lovinger worked as an assistant to Eric Erickson in, grad in graduate school. So you'll see a lot of similarities within her stages of ego development to his theories as well. So according to Lovinger, ego development emerges out of the self's encounter with the world as it seeks to make sense of it. So Lovinger created a theory of ego development based on nine consecutive statements or stages to make sense of this theory. So the first stage is called pre-social infancy. So the pre-social stage that occurs during infancy is more focused on the baby's immediate needs such as hunger, needing to use the restroom, and sleep. So according to Lovinger, a baby during this stage has no ego to speak of until it begins to differentiate itself from those around them and specifically their caregivers. The next stage is the impulsive stage. So a young child during the impulsive stage is more focused on its emotions, such as sexual and aggressive desires. So children are already aware of their self versus non-self. The child's focus is on present events rather than being caught up in the past or future. So if a child wants something right now, all of its attention will be completely focused on what they want and what their desires are in that moment, rather than how they may behave in the future or the past. The next stage is the self-protective stage. So during the self-protective stage, children begin to develop some self-control. The child is caught up in perceiving the world through punishments and rewards, but also feels the need to not get caught. So during this stage, you may see a child want more toys or more rewards when doing something well and reacting really negatively when being punished. So the, the reactivity in this stage increases exponentially and they start to kind of embark on their curiosities and do more mischievous things to kind of explore um, and when doing so they know they're not supposed to be doing it so they want to not get caught. This stage is called the conformist stage. During the conformist stage children now become more aware of society and feel the need to belong to a group. Children and adolescents tend to look at others and make judgments of them based on external factors such as how they look, how they act, based off of the norms and stereotypes that are prevalent during the time where they're at that age in that stage. Because of this, the ego starts to strengthen itself through comparisons to others and building a superiority complex based off of their judgments of others. So for example, if I'm in the conformist stage and I see someone else breaking the norm at that time, I may boost myself above that other person, seeing myself as more superior to them because I follow the norm compared to them, which builds a stronger ego. Now I'm going to be talking about the self-aware stage. So during the self-aware stage, we see the beginnings of self-criticism with an increasing awareness of the real me versus the expected me. Lovinger believed that this stage represents the model for most adult behavior, and it won't be a shock if people tend to stay in this stage for the rest of their life. So because we're growing in self-awareness, we also start to see the traits within ourselves and our character and our external appearance that may not coincide with the norm of society at the time. And because of this, we can be more harsh on ourselves. The ego not only strengthened itself through the superiority complex, but also through an inferiority complex. If you start to increase the self-criticism that you are targeting towards yourself, you're going to start to look for ways to strengthen your confidence through your ego. So for example, if you're feeling insecure about yourself because you're becoming more aware of the traits you may not like because it doesn't fit the societal standard, you'll look at someone and be like, 
oh, well, at least I am not as bad as so-and-so. And because our insecurities during this stage go through the ego, it also strengthens it as well. So that is essentially what Lavender is referring to during the self-aware stage. So the next stage is the conscientious stage. During this stage, individuals have internalized the rules of society along with its expectations. The egos feel guilty for hurting other people's feelings rather than, let's say, breaking the law or breaking the rules. The conscientious stage is characterized by self-evaluation and motivation to achieve. So after we become self-aware of our own self-doubt and self-criticism, we tend to derive our insecurities from the expectations of society. And we can do this by comparing our accomplishments at a certain age compared to other people's. So for example, because society rewards people who become CEOs at the age of 22, if you're 22 and haven't accomplished that kind of success, then you're going to have some more self-criticism and self-doubt. But this self-criticism and self-doubt also motivates us to achieve more in comparison to those who we look up to and have achieved more. So now we'll be talking about the individualistic stage. So in this stage, respect for others tend to increase, but also respect for individuality in ourself and the things that make other people unique. So a person at this stage becomes more sensitive to their inner experience and the world around them. So there's a deeper sense of self-understanding and realization of inner conflicts. So in this stage, we tend to break out of the societal mold and start to reflect within ourselves and see what makes us different and how can we be proud of ourselves for it, for our differences, and as well as find joy, happiness, and acceptance in other people's differences as well. Now we'll be looking at one of the final stages, which is called the autonomous stage. So achieving a sense of self-fulfillment becomes more important than outer achievements in this stage. There's a greater capacity to embrace the polarities of life. Self-acceptance does go deeper in this stage. So once you have even greatly separated yourself from societal influences and you've reflected more, the importance of whether you have wealth or your material possessions start to decrease and therefore your ego starts to decrease and you're able to come closer to achieving self-fulfillment. Now the last stage I'll be talking about is the integrated stage. In this stage, the ego shows inner wisdom, deep empathy for others, and a high degree of self-acceptance. During this stage, the ego becomes fully formed and matured. Lavender says very few make it to this stage. So the integrated stage is actually really similar to Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So self-actualization is very similar to being in the integrated stage. So this is more likely in older people. So senior citizens will most likely be able to achieve the integrated stage because they're most likely near the end of their life and they have come to terms with what they've done and how life has gone and are starting to break away from the need for material items and accomplishments within their life. So for my creative component, I decided to attach a podcast episode of On Purpose with Jay Shetty that I thought was really relevant to my presentation. It's titled, Three Strategies Confident People Use to Overcome Their Ego. So I thought this was really relevant to my presentation because it revolves around ego and how that becomes prevalent in certain moments or phases of our lives. And this episode talks all about strategies to overcome the ego in hopes of achieving the final stage that I mentioned, which is integrated, but also autonomous as well is a great kind of phase to aim towards as well as being integrated. So I linked the podcast episode on the screen, but you can find it on Apple Podcasts, Spotify as well. Um, you can also go to Jay Shetty's website to talk all about this topic as well. Thank you so much for listening to my presentation. This is my Works Cited page. I used only two sources for all of my research that you see on the slides here, so I hope you enjoyed it.